After suffering from one of the worst weeks we've seen since the financial crisis on the stock market, today we bounced back a little bit. Today, the Dow surged 5.1%, which is the biggest gain we've seen since 2009. Now that's great news. We're seeing a little light at the end of the tunnel here, but what I was looking forward to most about the stock market opening today was whether it was gonna be up or down, I was looking to invest some more money because here on this channel, I do the Robinhood challenge. I take $100 every single week, invest it into the stock market, and I just share with you guys my tips, my tricks, my insight, and why I'm making these moves. So normally I would invest $100 today, which is a Monday, because that's the cadence that I invested on. However, today I was unable to do that. I'm sure most, if not all of you already know that the Robinhood app was down. It wasn't functional today. And that was the complete user base for the app. When I first signed into my account, you could see that there's nothing really being displayed. And where I wanted to take advantage of the market conditions right now and invest some more money, I was unable to do that today. Now, at first I thought, okay, this is just a little inconvenience that I'm not gonna have to worry too much about. And I didn't think that it was gonna be down for the entire day. But after a few hours with no real updates or any insight to what was going on, I figured this is a much bigger situation going on. My whole mindset behind this is, holy crap, am I lucky that I am a long-term investor and not somebody who is doing day trades, taking advantage of options or even swing trading right now. For investors with that style, if they were doing something like putting puts on the SPY, meaning they were betting that the market was going to go down today, they couldn't actually sell those options at the opening and likely the value of those would be reduced to zero. So I decided to tweet out, I'm lucky to be a long-term investor during this outage. I can't even imagine the damage that Robinhood's crash has done to day traders, swing traders, etc. No time is good for a platform to crash, but this is horrible. I wonder what is going to happen. Now I did get a number of replies from a bunch of people out there who were saying basically, oh, there's no way that I'm gonna be using Robinhood after this. I'm gonna be switching brokerages. And I can't say that I blame them. I myself am in a fortunate situation where this outage really doesn't hurt me too much since all I was gonna be doing was putting $100 into the market today. I wasn't gonna be selling any of my stocks. So for somebody, an investor like me, this really isn't any sweat off of my back, but I do understand the implications this has on many different investors as well as the investing market as a whole. So I do think it's more than likely that based on all the outrage I saw and the power and numbers that people were coming together, there's gonna to be a huge shift between brokerages. And I think we're gonna see after the dust settles on all this, a lot of people are gonna start shifting from Robinhood and start using other brokerages. And it is really a shame because Robinhood is my favorite brokerage, but I do understand the magnitude of this issue. So aside from all the different news articles that decided to cover this story, it was also trending on the US for Twitter. There were thousands and thousands of people banding together, claiming that they're gonna sue Robinhood, they're gonna take them down, but they're is one thing to keep in mind. I think this is gonna be a hard task to tackle because Robinhood clearly states in their terms of use, which most people probably haven't read, it says, Robinhood or its affiliates shall not be liable for any losses as a result of any issues addressed in section 32 of this agreement, nor shall Robinhood or its affiliates be liable for any losses realized for technical issues involving any API products or API licensee technology or product offerings, including system outages or downtime. So that's where they get you. It includes those system outages or downtime. They're pretty smart when they're developing platforms like this. I'm pretty sure that most platforms would have this written in their terms and conditions. So that's something to keep in mind. I think it's gonna be hard for a lot of people to tackle them because of that. At the same time, there are a bunch of people talking about starting a class action lawsuit. And I myself, I'm not too familiar with how those operate or how those work. So if you can explain that to me, definitely do it in the comment section. I'd be interested to hear if there are any grounds for them in this. What's even crazier is if I didn't have access to my Twitter accounts or any other accounts online, the only way I would have been notified of this outage was at 2.03 p.m. when Robinhood directly reached out to me via email. It pretty much stated that starting at 9.33 a.m., they started experiencing downtime across their entire platform, and they basically were just gonna keep us in the loop and keep us updated with what happens. And that was the last thing that I heard directly from the Robinhood team. Robinhood also provided us with a link to a website that tells you the status of the Robinhood platform at the moment. So you can tell if I head over to the Robinhood status website that there is a system-wide outage and they're still experiencing some of those issues. To add even more chaos to this, there was a Robinhood class action Twitter account that was created that has over 2,700 followers right now and counting. You can tell whoever created this account is very salty towards Robinhood as their tweets are really expressive of that. Now, all we've really heard from Robinhood is that their team is working hard to resolve the issue and they're sorry 
sorry for any inconveniences this caused, but I don't think that's enough in this case. To be honest, I don't really know what can be done at this point for Robinhood to backtrack and save themselves because this is just such a big issue. Let me know what you guys think Robinhood should or could be doing in order to make this situation right with its investors. So there's a lot of rumors, a lot of speculations as to why this might be happening within the Robinhood platform. There was definitely a huge increase in volume of users that was going on. That was one of the things that might've caused it. But then also I saw this tweet that my good buddy Michael pointed out to me and that tweet said, hey look Robinhood, did somebody forget to code in the leap year that is happening? Now I don't know how to read code or coding or any of that stuff, but what I do know is that Robinhood is a platform that's been around for a while and it's seen a leap year before and it hasn't had this similar issue. What is good to know is that my money is in Robinhood, it's in the platform and it is all FDIC insured and that basically means that I'm not going to lose that money if anything drastic happens to Robinhood. Now one big question that I'm getting from a lot of you guys is am I going to be switching platforms that I personally use? Now I know a lot of investors out there have pretty strong feelings towards this but what I like to keep in mind is that for Robinhood, this is more of my longer term investing, not something that I'm looking to toy around with, make a couple bucks here and there, doing some day trades and swing trades. If I was investing serious money, I would be looking into other brokerages for sure. I would not be using Robinhood if that were the case. But for me, my investment style, this hiccup by Robinhood, which I can't even classify as a hiccup, this is a major issue. This major issue from Robinhood doesn't affect me nearly as much as it affects other users. Now, obviously this situation hasn't been resolved resolved yet, but if it gets resolved in a more timely manner, which I can't even say that this is being resolved in a timely manner. It shouldn't be down an entire trading day. But if Robinhood can resolve this, you know, in a reasonable amount of time, I don't see why I'm gonna be switching brokerages anytime soon. If I did have more skin in the game and I was investing large amounts of money, I definitely would not be using Robinhood in that case though. So just keep that in mind. Obviously you guys will have to make your own decisions just because I think one way or another doesn't mean that you have to think or agree with me. So yes, I am upset, I am agitated at Robinhood that this would happen, but you have to keep in mind a similar situation was happening with some of the other brokerages like TD Ameritrade. They were having volume issues that was locking people out of their accounts, but they were able to resolve the issue in a much more reasonable manner and a much quicker fashion. Robinhood already does have questionable customer service and you can't even reach them on a telephone. So that's super important when you're dealing with money. I mean, this is make or break for some people. And although, like I said, I definitely wouldn't use Robinhood in that situation. I would go with a more reputable brokerage. I'd use like Charles Schwab or something like that. But when you're dealing with money, when you're dealing with people's finance, you really can't mess around and you need to be able to help them out when they need help. Now, the reason why I do feel so bad is for those investors that it impacted the most. I don't feel bad for myself. I feel like I structured my portfolio fine. I wasn't really worried about what was going on in the market, but for those that this really makes a big difference to, I do feel for them. So moving forward, my big question for you is what are you gonna be doing? Will you stick it out? Will you continue using Robinhood? or are you definitely switching brokerages? I definitely want to know after this situation where your mindset is at and how you're going to be proceeding. And listen, if you guys do have any questions for me, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. If you want to check out another video that I have here on this channel, then go ahead and check out this video right here. It's going to be talking about how I am investing with this stock market crash, with this correction going on, and also with market conditions. So check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and have a great day.